Coach Wallace, how you doing? I've had better Mondays, but I'm doing all right. <laughs> oh, it is a Monday. But, Coach, let's get started. Uh, those darn halftime leads, they seem to be more of a unfortunate foreshadowing for you lately. What's, uh, is there something going on in that halftime talk that's just, you know, what's, what seems to be a theme that's going on here that that's just, it's, it just, it's just hurting you in the second half of the game? Well, I'm not big on halftime talks because they last about as long as your halftime talk. But I think the bottom line thing is we're not playing as well in the second half as we played in the first half, and I think that's really the issue. And, uh, you know, for whatever reasons, uh, offensively, uh, we're struggling to maintain the ball, and defensively, we're struggling to get it back. When we play on the road, those have been difficult times for us. And uh, for whatever reasons, uh, you, as a coach, you're always looking for the answers. If anybody has them out there, I'm, I'm open to some, to some suggestions. I think uh, sometimes, too, you, when you get to the fourth time that it's happened, happened, don't think it's not in the back of the player's mind. And sometimes it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy, I hate to say it, and that's not a good thing either. Uh, and you try to force the action and make the action, and that's not a good way to play any game or anything that you do uh, that you care about. The best way to do it is prepare yourself and just go do it. And I think right now we're probably it's probably in our head a little bit, coaches, players alike, to be honest. And uh, we'll work on it, and we'll try to find a solution, and hopefully that can be found in a couple of weeks, but hopefully we'll take care of South Dakota at home first. You, you hinted on the mental aspect in the game, but you got a familiar f opponent coming up in South Dakota next week. Uh, what's what's something you, you're looking on to improve on? Is there is is it just kind of trying to get guys in the right mindset to get them over, um, you know, a couple, uh, you know, a few games that you guys kind of seemed like you had in hand and kind of just slip away from you? Well, I think number one, easily this year we could be right now eight and one or one and eight. To be honest with you, I mean, you know, really we beat Sacramento State and Dixie State pretty good. Every other game has been a great game, and that's what we expect again this week. I think South Dakota is a much improved team. They've lost three or four heartbreaking games. It's their last season. I would hope from an emotional standpoint, playing at home has obviously been a plus for us, and we'd like to maintain that. But also for the uh, 12 seniors that'll be playing their last game at Spano Stadium, I think that it'll be emotional for them, and I think that uh, our football team respects the leadership we have in the senior class and uh, and all those things, and hopefully they'll respond well as a football team. Uh, for the Carlton Gillespie's, John Halls, uh, Xavier Gardner's, Ryan Shotwell's, et cetera. Coach, back to the second half. Uh, 13 points scored on the road this year in the second half of five games, uh, 81, I believe, uh, with the opposition. I, I mean, just kind of getting back to that, is there is just nothing that you can pinpoint, I guess? I mean, Well, our execution the... was bad on Saturday on, on the offensive side of the ball. And like I said before, if you don't have the ball, look at time of possession in those four games, too. I think you'll find out if you don't have the ball, it's pretty tough to score any points. And I think the combination of those two things are the, is the, are the that's the factors. The, the, the facts of the matter is we haven't executed well on offense, and this offense is an executing offense. And it takes everybody executing at the same time, the same way, in order to, you know, in order for it to be successful. I mean, and no offense to the pass, the pass is the pass. And if you have the ability to throw it to a guy and he can go up and make a play, that's a little different. You know, right now we have to execute the offense and execute it perfectly, and we did it. We've done a very good job of that with the exception of the goal line response we had last week at the, in, in the second quarter, which was a, probably an emotional part of the, the football game that we lost. But reality is we've got to execute the defense, the offense, and the special teams better than we have. And if we do that, then maybe things will turn around. As long as we're going to look for some magic wand to get waved, <laughs> that's not going to get it done. You know, we've got to take care of business and do it ourselves. Going back to the start of the year, game one, I mean, it looked like it was a, a good game against Sacramento State. Week nine now, four and five. Uh, have you seen any, like, discernible progress that, that you like from this team, or has it regressed? I mean, what, what, what's been the progress of this team from week one to, to week nine here? Well, I think, number one, we're not playing with the same guys week in and week out and day in and day out that we played with in week one, and that's unfortunate. It's part of the game of football, but that's a fact of life, too. That's a fact. And I think the consistency of playing and playing with guys sometimes that practice, don't practice and do play, hasn't been a good effect for us either. So I think that those are things that probably I don't like, but they're the realities of maybe where we are. I think at times, and especially probably the last two or three weeks, we've been more consistent throwing the football on the offensive side of the ball, probably not as explosive as we'd like to be, but probably a little bit more consistent. Uh, nine out of ten in the first half the other day I thought was very good performance by Tony. In the second half we got in situations where we had to throw it uh, when we didn't want to throw it. And in the first half, we were throwing it when we wanted to throw it. And I think that had a little bit to do with it uh, as well. I think, though, on the special team side of it, obviously, uh, I do think that Harlan Prather, for the most part, has been fairly consistent in tough elements the other day, punting the football. And I think our coverage teams have improved uh, dramatically as the years progressed. Uh, defensively, you know, I think the amount of plays we're playing has taken its toll on the effectiveness of us. We're not the biggest team in the United States of America by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, I think being on the field for 75 and 80 plays is 
too many plays for us to play week in and week out that way. And I think it shows as the games wear on, I think we do wear out a little bit. And that's unfortunate, but that's, again, kind of where we are from a depth perspective as well. And I, but I think that the effort and the heart that our players have played with the entire year, four and five, it's been a, uh, an emotional year for everybody, I think, from the, the changes and things like that. And nobody planned on us being four and five, and we certainly didn't want to be four and five. Uh, but our players' attitude and I think that their uh, directiveness at practice and things like that, it's been a pleasure to be around the young people that play here. With two games left to go in the season, I mean, the playoffs we know are out, the, the, the conference championship out, the Golden Horseshoe is out. So, you know, there's a lot of things that, that are off the table now. What's the, the mindset going into the final two games? Well, uh, you know, I, I really, I personally, I mean, that's all good. You know, you can say that. But if you don't love the sport you're playing, if you don't love the things you're doing in your life, you're missing the point about having passion to do the things you really enjoy doing. And these guys chose to play the game of football a long time ago. I chose to coach a foot game of football a long time ago. And... We're going to be passionate in how we play, period, end of statement. I don't care what we're playing for. We're playing for a football game, and we have a game that you line up, and if you don't, you're disrespecting what the whole game's meant to be played about. I mean, you're supposed to play it with emotion and passion, and if you don't, I'll be real disappointed in our players. I don't think that will happen. Um, 